Hey there guys, you may have heard on the JP server that my favorite unit Sephiroth has gotten his crown upgrades and, you know, ability upgrades. This has made him significantly more powerful than he used to be. So we're going to be going to the Belphegor trial, a trial coming out in a few hours on Global, to do an all mission clear on the JP server using Sephiroth. Now this that I'm showing you now is like an attack power build in a two-handed weapon, etc. That shows you that now Sephiroth gets up to 11,125 attack power. Also, his LB modifier has been upgraded to 430x baseline, up to 560x if you're using things like Titus STMR with Tybus STMR, etc. Um, his weapon and peril has gone up to 30%. Uh, his Amplify has gone up to a massive 150% Dark Amplify. That being said, it is on a Magnus ability, one-time use. But still, for Bursting, Sephiroth has become incredibly powerful. Now we're going to use him for a all-mission clear on Belphegor. Um, this is the team we're going to use. Now, when we gear for killers, his attack power does go down a tiny amount. So he's only got 10,800 attack power when you're maxing out things like Demon Killer and all that. But still, extremely, extremely powerful. So here's the party we're going to use. Let's go in here and do an all mission clear on the Belphegor trial. Now, this trial can be tricky to clear if you're going for a little bit of a slower clear because after turn three... He starts doing some pretty nasty attacks, but if you're able to kill this trial very quickly, it's extremely easy. So this is hard mode, by the way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use Hawkeye to break the boss. We're going to use some buffs with Dark Fina. We're going to start Sephiroth in the base form for Titus STMR, and we're going to go ahead and shift and stack his LB. Unfortunately, his shifted LB is still a stacking LB, but it only has one stack. So on the second use, you're at maximum power. So we're going to go ahead and stack it up right now. Now the damage right now is going to be relatively low. Uh, his big damage will come soon um, on the next burst. That was, again, a stacking burst. Hawkeye is our provoker. Hawkeye is not really a tank. We're not using any mitigations whatsoever. So, yeah, that was kind of painful, but, you know, whatever. Um, it's fine. So we're going to go ahead and use some Demon Killer with our Dark Fina. We'll just guard Hawkeye. And we're going to use Sephiroth to use these new abilities he was given. That's going to, again, buff him up and give him a 150 Dark Amplify. Very, very, very powerful. So next burst is going to be quite strong. And again, you know, Hawkeye, not really a tank, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and use Dark Fina for some better LB buffs. And now it is time to unleash the full power of Sephiroth with his 150 Dark Amplify. So hopefully we do good damage here. And there it is. A turn three clear on hard mode Belphegor. This is absolutely hard mode. And there it is. So here's the team we used. Um, Hawkeye is our passive provoker with, um, you know, guts because he's not really a tank. But again, he survived for the first two turns. That's all we cared about. And the, like I said, the boss is completely single target for the first few turns and in phase one, which is why if you're able to clear this fight very quickly, it's super easy. Um, Dark Fina was, I had her as a secondary provoker in case Hawkeye died. He obviously didn't, but whatever. She was here basically for her big LB buff. Um, we didn't really need her amplify, but the uh, 400, I'm sorry, the... Um, 250, actually that was her, yeah, there it is, the SLB. Uh, for her 300% LB buff and the 400% stat buff, we didn't need the Dark Amplify because Seth does it naturally. And then Biggs and Wedge are just, you know, quad attacking the usual stuff, and they have some Dark Resist to cover the magic. Um, and then here is my Sephiroth. My Sephiroth has, you know, a double hand weapon. We gave him the two-handed Dark Visions weapon. For those of you that don't have the Sephiroth Special Katana, the Dark Visions weapon, after it gets upgraded to two-handed, um, is a lot better. Um, but then again, they did rerun the Massa Moon anyway. But anyhow, um, so in the base form, we're using Titus STMR. This is again for the auto LB modifier buff. And then shift form is max Demon Killer, maxed LB damage. And here is the setup. Knight's a Grand Shell card, a little bit better than his own card. 
And then here is FCON. Um, FCON, you know, does not have the Dark Visions Katana, although he did offer to go buy it for this video. I told him, nah, there's no need to buy the Dark Visions Katana for this video. But even, even so, you can still see, even if you don't have the Dark Visions Katana, he's still got more than 10,000 attack power with his, you know, old Katana. Um, and here's the build, basically the same as mine, Max Demon, etc. He's using his own card, which is fine. Um, slightly lower damage than the uh, Knights of Grand Shell card, but still completely fine, maxed on everything, and there we go. So let's go ahead and see the damage breakdown. Um, my Sephiroth is level 130 as well, because I mean, it's Sephiroth. So we went ahead and 130 him. But yeah, 150 Amplify with 11,000 attack power, maxed on all stats, two handed weapon, a now 30% uh, weapon in peril. Very powerful, and you know, the Dark Visions Katana is a little bit better, which is why mine did a decent chunk more damage. But, you know, the Dark Visions Katana is very expensive. It does cost 10,000 Dark Matter for the two-handed version, which is why I've been recommending players to not waste any Dark Matter at all on the one-handed weapon. Save it all for the two-handed versions, because the two-handed versions are completely new weapons. They are not upgrades to the one-handers. The one-handers are basically a trap. Do not waste any dark matter on one-handers. Save it all for the two-handers. Anyway, yeah, Sephiroth, very strong. I am very happy to see that. All right, see you in a bit.